This engine started leaking water out the bottom of this liner. Generally, if I'm only going to run one of these for a few minutes, I do not put water in them. And I never did put water in this one. So when I did decide to put water in here, it started leaking out the bottom of the liner. So we're going to take this apart and see if we can fix that. If you want to be extra careful so you don't accidentally break the spark plug, you can remove it. I'm going to loosen these six bolts that hold the head on, and that's a two and a half millimeter socket. Now some of these were quite tight, so you want to make sure you're using a good Allen wrench so you don't mess up that socket. I don't think they need to be quite that tight. We're going to have to take this part off of here. That's a real small bolt, and it felt like it had a little Loctite on it. You want to be real gentle with that. I usually put small parts like that in a pill bottle so they don't disappear. We'll just take that whole assembly off. Remove the rest of these head bolts. I have not had a head off of one of these hit and miss engines yet. I've been fortunate. My O-rings have lasted. Of course, I'm not out here running them every day either. So there's the inside of the head. I would try not to move this copper gasket around. That's your intake valve there. And the exhaust valve the exhaust valve, you can see it going up and down inside there. Intake valve. I'm going to take the bottom end of the conrod off. I put a couple of dots on there with a magic marker just so I know that it goes back together the same way it came apart. Push that conrod forward and we can see that's running on a brass bushing. So that is something you want to dribble a little oil down into every time you oil stuff. This is as far as you would have to pull that piston out of there to replace these O-rings. And they are using two O-rings on this piston. This will not come all the way out because the bottom end of the connecting rod is hitting that liner. But if I push on that just a little bit, then that bottom end of the connecting rod will help remove this liner. I just used the bottom end of this conrod to push that liner out. There's a black o-ring in this groove and another o-ring in this groove. The black o-rings were removed and new green o-rings were installed. So we're going to take this liner, we're going to rub it with 3-in-1 oil, and I'm going to oil this up real good. Put the piston back in here and carefully turn and reinsert this. That's a bit of an oily mess, so I'm not going to show the process on camera. The black o-rings were removed. They apparently had a cut in them someplace that allowed it to leak water. And I replaced them with these green o-rings the same dimension. When you put this back together, don't tighten these real tight. You just want them snug. And this one has to remain a little bit loose because this pivots on that bolt. When you put this bolt in here, remember that's quite fragile. And this link still has to be able to move. This is a pretty simple task to take this off to change piston ring O-rings. And bolting this back on, everything lines up. Changing the O-rings in this is... Probably about a 10-minute job once you get used to it first time, maybe 20 minutes. And I've been asked several times, there is no physical connection between the spark plug and this wire. This wire just pushes in through this little boot. And when you push that on the spark plug, the end of that wire just butts up against the end of the spark plug. That is the only connection, and that's good enough works perfectly. This has had water in it for several hours now and it has remained dry down here at the bottom of the liner. So it appears those o-rings are going to hold. 